Good morning. Welcome again to the live broadcast of the Greater New Primer Rock Baptist Church. Oh, we're just so happy to have you all tune in with us this morning. Be excited what God has done and what he is doing. And we're looking forward with great anticipation that we can come together again and assemble as we learn that never forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as a man or some all. Now, we want to do that as soon as possible, but we also want to adhere to the guidelines that have been established and sent down to us. And this is what we're doing. But however, we miss you and we're looking forward to seeing you again. And in the Lord's time, this will come to pass. This morning, I want to come to us in a different direction. Since the beginning of the COVID, uh, coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been preaching sermons to encourage us and to strengthen our faith in God. Now, however, this morning, I, I, I want to just change a little. I want to have us to observe, to celebrate, and to honor mothers, because this is Mother's Day. Therefore, I asked the Lord permission, I really did, uh, to deviate from the messages on coronavirus and, pan, uh, and COVID-19 pandemic, and I asked him to allow me to preach a message that will help us to uh, appreciate mothers. Why? For all the things that they have done that have gone on unnoticed and unappreciated. I will be expounding on one of the mother of the greatest oh, well, let me say that again. I will be expounding this morning on the mother of one of the most famous prophets in the Bible. This morning, I want us to focus on this thought. What is this thought you want us to focus on, Pastor? This thought is, Moses' mother was an example of a good mother. Again, Moses' mother was an example of a good mother. Would you turn with me to Exodus, the second chapter? And the first 10 verses, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading again from the King James Version, and here's what the scripture said. And there went a man out of the house of Levi, and he took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that uh, he was a godly child, she hid him three months. Verse 3 said, And when she could no longer hide him, she took him uh, for an ark of, 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 of bulrushes, and she dug it with slime and with pitch, and she put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, that was Miriam, you know, to wit what would be done to him? Verse 5 said, And the, uh, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maiden walked along the river bank side. And when she saw the ark among the flag, she sent her maid to fetch it. Verse 6 says, And when the maid had opened it, she saw the child the, uh, of the Hebrew children. Verse 7, Then said the, the, the sister to Pharaoh, daughter, Shall I go and call uh, the, uh, to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Go. And the man went and called the child's mother. How great thou art. Verse 9 said, And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Verse 10, our last verse. And the child grew 
And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. As usual, would you agree with me in prayer? Father, thank you afresh. Again, let me preach you like you show it to me. Let these words glorify you, edify the body of Christ, terrify Satan, O oh God. Allow me to speak only what you command, what you lead, Father. Let me take myself out of the way and let your Holy Spirit take control. I act as I usually do. Allow me to journey with him. To give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor, let this message meet me, O oh God. And just for a few minutes, let us concentrate less on the COVID pandemic and concentrate on our mothers and what they have done for us and to us, O oh God. Thank you again. Thank you. These blessings and all others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is not a very long message. I don't know if you all have been following. So we usually preach about 30 minutes, and I think this one will be right in the ballpark about 30 minutes or less. I don't have that many points. But the first thing I want to submit because Moses' uh, mother was a good mother, Moses' mother released him. Yeah, she let Moses go. She had to. You will find that in verses. Jacobet. That's what After conceiving him and giving birth to a male child, she did not kill him as Pharaoh commanded. You don't have to go back to chapter 1 and verse 22 to find that. Pharaoh had said, All of the children are born. If it's a girl, let her live. If it's a boy, throw him in the river. Well, partially followed his instructions. She didn't throw him in the river, but she placed him in the river in an ark. Jacob would not kill Moses. Could not keep him. Think about that. Her conviction as a mother would allow her to kill the child that she had carried for nine months. She couldn't kill him. And she couldn't keep it. Let me put a, a, a spiritual kickstand right there for a second. That was danger in her disobeying the law of Pharaoh. What he had commanded, they were supposed to. But how many of us know that more than she feared God? There is some interesting things that it's like a little sidebar from this message, but I think it's noteworthy in mentioning and saying. Just let me give a few accolades to women. All of them in the, had the potential for being mothers. Let's start off with the midwives. The midwives, they disobeyed Pharaoh and they obeyed God. As Pharaoh said, Take the men and kill them when they're born. Then we go to Jacobed, Moses' mother. He, she didn't. She wouldn't kill Moses. Then we have uh, Miriam, Moses, Pharaoh's daughter. They were glad and they showed compassion and they were anxious to see how they could help save this Hebrew child. A lot of women. A lot of women, because this is Mother's Day, I just wanted to give them a uh, few accolades. Uh, so after three months, when she could no longer, she made an ark. And she placed Moses in the ark, and she released Moses in the ark, in the Nile River, and she didn't even hope that God would protect and keep him. Now here's a good here's an example of a good mother. 
when it's too difficult for us, it's just right. What a wonderful thing a mother can do. After we have tried and done everything that we can for our children and it doesn't seem that it's going to work out, we just bless them in the hand of the Lord from the beginning. Uh, and I don't want to deviate too much from Mother Day, but just not a, a, a whole about my father, Abraham. A good mother seeks not to to kill her child. She could easily get rid of a child by abortion. But rather, she chose to release a child for adoption. That's approximately what she did when she put it in there. She said, I can't keep him no longer, Father, but I'm going to put him out there and hopefully someone would adopt him and rear him and his life would be spared. Now, we don't know what great was God for the child that the mother abhors. I send that in general. And so the mothers who probably have aborted some children don't feel so despondent because of this message, and we are mentioning abortion. God is a God of forgiveness, and he sent his son Jesus Christ. Even if you have committed uh, uh, an act of abortion, God can forgive you for that also. Go from where you are. Confess, repent, and believe that he has forgiven you. And God can still use you. Again, we don't know what prayers God has for the child that the mother aborts. I've often said when uh, preaching a series of sermons on that some time ago, I said, we don't know what she has in her womb. She doesn't know what she has in her womb. The main person that God has placed in some women who might be one who can discover the cure for cancer who knows that they can't discover the cure for this pandemic that we're going through right now? Who don't know if you're going to be the next president, a great defender of justice? We don't know. We have to wait and trust and believe God that these children didn't come here for an accident and God has a divine purpose. Imagine, if you will, the consequence if Moses' mother had aborted him. I'm sure that God would have found some way to get the children out of Egypt. But he had destined Moses for that. Now, if Moses' mother would have aborted him, then it wouldn't have been impossible, but it would have been more, could have been difficult, or the time limit would, could be longer. It was in God's hand. But I'm so grateful that she did not abort him. One of my daughters was told, by the doctor that the womb had a great chance of being born with Down syndrome. They didn't stop there. They went on to say, we don't see any pressure around her nose. Look like she's not going to have a nose. Here's what they do. The doctor asked, he said, do you want to continue or with the pregnancy or do you want to terminate the pregnancy? Yeah, right. They didn't know who they were talking to. My daughter just looked at them in a spiritual eye, in a spiritual way with a disgruntled to me or no son no ma'am what God has given will come to fruition God didn't say that I don't care what the ultrasound say and show show I'm gonna have this baby I'm not telling you which one of my daughter I'm not telling you what the child was all I can say all of you is healthy and normal God has a purpose in uh, store for well, some mothers uh, end their pregnancy because they don't want children. Thank God Jochebed uh, wanted Moses. Now you have to realize Jochebed and Abraham, her husband, already had two children. They had Miriam, who was the oldest, and they had Aaron, 
who was about three years or two years older than Moses. Moses was the third child. So she could have easily said, well, I got two. I thank God for them two, and I'm just going to be grateful. But no, she said, Lord, you give me three, and I'm going to do my best to protect and rear this three, even in spite of the orders and the command of Pharaoh. I'm talking about a good mother. A good mother will die civil authority and trust God for deliverance, for healing, for protection. Well, when I was a child, we were poor. I know you heard this sad story before. We were poor in substances, but we were rich in God and rich in God favor. My father worked after losing a good job. Uh, with an industry in the industrial hand called Pan Am. That's a refinery. Shut down. In order to support his family, my father cut grass with a side blade. The ditches in the community, not the tractors and lawnmowers, with a side blade to rear six children. Quite naturally, that wasn't enough. Here come mom. God bless her. And I love her so much. I love my father too, but this is Mother's Day. She took on not only the task of rearing uh, the children at home and being uh, a mother and a, a, a wife, but she also went out and said, I need to help my husband support and take care of our children. I'm talking about a good mother. She went and cleaned people's house. Not only did she clean their house, she washed and she ironed their clothes. Not only did she clean the house, wash and iron their clothes, if need be, she helped take care of them. And that wasn't enough. She worked in restaurants in La Plata, Alain Motors as a, as a cook. Couldn't eat in a place, but was cooking and serving. Couldn't socialize with the people she was working for. Couldn't even go to the same church, but nevertheless, because she was a good mother, she did what she had to do to provide and to take care of her children. Oh, I love her. Oh, I miss her. I don't wish she was back here. No way. She's up in heaven. She's resting. Glad one day we're going to meet and see her again. But I just want to give her some, I don't know, a few flowers, a few accolades. Oh, my mother was denied, not was denied, but she denied herself of many necessities of life, not just wants, but things that she needed. Let me give you a few examples. I'll get back to Jacob and Moses in a second. I can't remember my mother having an extravagant wardrobe. I can remember her wearing the same clothes over and over until they just couldn't wear them until they wore it out. However, as improvised as we walk, I can remember clearly that when school opened, we always had sufficient clothing. It may not be as many as others have. It might be one pair of pants or two pair of pants, one skirt or two skirts, one pair of shoes. Yes, one pair of shoes. But we had new things. But how did we get that? Because she sacrificed. I want to give my father some accolades too, but this is Mother's Day. She neglected herself, her needs, all to do what? To make our needs will be met. I'm talking about a good mother. Sometimes we can look back in hindsight right now and see that we sometimes, but nevertheless, we never went hungry. Somehow, some way, they find methods and ways to provide food for us. I cannot remember coming in one day from school that a big hearty smile 
and a hot meal was prepared for us. It wasn't like it is today. I don't eat this. I don't eat that. We ate what we had. But it was made with love. I'm talking about a, a, a good mother. Whenever a, a word is used more than once in a passage of scripture or in a chapter in the Bible, the Holy Spirit said, we need to take notice because God is trying to tell us something. Since this is Mother's Day, I want to use the text to give tribute to mothers by pointing out how many times the feminine word she, S-H-E, is used. I want to go back up to the first part of the scripture. And it's going to be either she or her. When you go to Exodus, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10, if you would look in the second verse, he said, and a woman bare a son, and when she saw him, ha <laughs> ha, she saw him, that he was a godly child. Here's the next she. She hid him for three months. Not the father, the mother, she. In verse three, and when she could no longer hide him, that's three times it has been mentioned. Here it is again. She took him from she, she took for him an ark of gold rushes and dabbed it with slime. That's four times. And if you go to the end of the third verse, and she laid him in a flag, that's five times. And if you go down to verse number seven, the verse number nine, it says, and Pharaoh said unto her, I mean, Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, still female, okay? And then if you go into verse number 10, and the woman, that's a female, and verse 10 said, that was verse 9, and verse 10 said, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh. Look how many times it points to the mother. What she did didn't even mention the father's name. I'm trying to show you the example of a good mother. Uh, uh, Jacobet was a good mother. She did all that she could for the uh, protection, for the development of her child. Now, get back to the next point. The second thing I'm going to suggest to us is that not only did Pharaoh, that, that Jacobin uh, released Moses, Pharaoh's daughter rescued him. You'll find that in verses 5 through 8. One release, the other rescue. Notice the progression here. I mean, verse 5 right now. Here's the progression. First thing we see is Moses, I mean Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses. That's in the B part of verse 5. The next thing we see is Pharaoh's daughter sent for Moses. We find that in 5C. The next thing we see is Pharaoh's daughter, through the grace of God now, saved Moses. Look at the progression again. She saw Moses. She sent for Moses. And then through the grace of God, saved. Moses, and you find that in verse 6. Moses' mother, I mean, when she, when, how she said it, when she heard the babe wept, she had compassion on him. God can use who's supposed to be our enemy and our captain to show compassion. Pharaoh's daughter, when she heard the baby cry, when she heard him weep, she had compassion. What that mean? She felt sorry for him. and have them to feel sorry for us. So when she heard the baby cry, she sent for him. Go see what it says. I see him, 
I'm sitting in front. Through God grace, I'm going to save him. Was a good mother who unselfishly released Moses so God enabled Pharaoh to him. Think about it. Because Jacobin was a good mother, and because she was unselfish, she said, I love my child. I don't want him to depart from me. But for his good, I'm going to release him. Release him. God already had these plans for him to be rescued. Pharaoh's daughter came and rescued Moses. Well, one more point. After being released and after being rescued, Moses' mother was granted the privilege to rear him. He was released by his mother. He was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, the prince. And now, look at God's word. God is going to allow his mother to rear him. Not the entire duration of his life, but at least two years. Some theologian, as I looked up, said that uh, Jacobed probably reared him until he was weaned until he was two years old. Now let me put another little spiritual kickstand right there. How many of us know that a lot can be learned in two years by children? And I know that we are witnessing this today. Uh, I have a granddaughter that's not yet two years old. She's about 22, 23 months. She's not, uh, I think she may come her day in June. She'll be two years old. But she can pick up an iPad. She can pick up an iPhone. And get on it. Put it on. And if it's dead, she will tell you, it's dead. You need to dead. She don't say it's dead, dead. Charge, charge. When you give it to her, she not only put it on, but she go and find the app that she want, and then she get into the app, she find what she want to look at in the app, and put it on herself, and sit down there and look at her. That's not yet two years old. I'm trying to build a case that in two years, Jacobet, Moses' mother, had a grand opportunity to instill some of the customs, the ways, and the history of the Jews into Moses. Now, this is important, what I just said, for a reason. For a reason. Theologians who are greater and smarter than I am, I believe, suggest that this is exactly what happened. Because when we read the account of Moses and we say he went out and he discovered his brethren, how did he know that it was his brethren? Where did he get that information from? It's a great possibility that I agree with the theologian that it was Jacobin who told him about the history of the Jews, who made him aware of his people. So therefore, when he went out and saw the, uh, the, the Egyptians, Smiting his brother, he killed the Egyptian and buried in his sand. Could it be, and I believe it was, that Jacobin, his mother, his real mother, in the two years that she was given the opportunity to rear him, told him about his history, his ancestry, and prepared him for the time when God would use him to deliver his people? Well, Moses' mother, a good mother, was not only granted and uh, given the privilege to real on some, but look at God's way again. But she was also paid <laughs> for rearing Moses until he was about two years old. Think about that. Aaron wanted to kill him. She obeyed God and she hid it. He was rescued. And now he's back to her to rear, and they are paying her to rear her own 
own son. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thus Moses' mother was a good mother. Why? Because she was obedient to God. God granted her the privilege to rear her son for two years. If I would just stretch it a little bit, and not going to stay alone. She brought him back to Pharaoh's uh, in approximately two years as a theologian agreed. And he was reared in a court of Pharaoh in all the traditions and ways and knowledge and wisdom of the Egyptians until he was about 40 years. For those of us who are familiar with the history of Moses, he spent 40 years in the courts of Pharaoh, minus two. He spent 40 years on the backside of the desert, rearing uh, sheep. And then he spent 40 years in the wilderness leading the children of Israel to the promised land. All of this because he had a good mother who was divinely inspired by God, who listened to God and feared God rather than man. What's the conclusion? Jesus was sent by God to release us from sin. Moab. Jacobet released her son. Jesus was also sent by God, and he released us from our sin. Not only that, but Jesus shed his blood and rescued us from sin. Heaven and earth was searching. Nobody was find worthy. It couldn't be done by goats and lambs and bulls and oxes and all that. Because once they did it, they had to do it again every year. But when Jesus shed his blood once and for all, that was redemption for man. We didn't have to go back and get redeemed over. Not only that, but uh, God sent his Holy Spirit to do what? To rear us, to guide us, and to keep us from sin. Again, Jesus was sent by God to release us from sin. Jesus shed his blood to rescue us from sin. And then after he went back to his father, God sent the Holy Spirit to rear us, to guide us, and to keep us from sin. What is the appeal this morning? My appeal to us, and I, just should, I should say it to you because my mother is going on to her final reward. If your mother is yet alive, first of all, Thank God for her. Then the next thing, take the opportunity to thank her for all that she has said and done for you. Again, a third spiritual kickstand. Many of us are so selfish and ungrateful. We don't care what our parents, especially our mother, has to go through in a way of neglecting herself, to give us not what we need, but what we want. And then after we get it, we are not appreciative of it. He, Jesus healed 10 of leprosy. Only one came back to say thank you. How many times as children do we go back and say, Mom, I thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I thank God for you. I thank you for all that you said and done. I miss my mother. I don't wish she was back here in this world. But I can uh, finally remember how she loved us, how she sung to us, how she provided for us, and how she made sure that all of our needs were met. I was with my mother till the last second of her life. She passed in my arm and my sister Mary Ella, um, who died two years later with the same thing her mother died with. Imagine that. Your mother taking her last breath in your own. She told us all before she leave, I don't want to go, but God showed me my time is up. I would like to see the new church building, but it doesn't appear that I'm going to see. She said, I'm going to be with God. 
She said, one glimpse of him. And she said, I'm not coming back down here, nor do I have any desire. But this is what I'll do. She said, I'm going to wait until you all come to me. What a mother. What a mother. Yes, I do miss her. Every day that something can occur that can bring her back. It might be looking at a picture. It might be something someone said. And when I go to the grave site to deposit her remains, if it happens to be in the same place where her remains are, I don't even go by her grave site. Now, you might not understand that, but let me explain it. Why don't I go for her? I'm still human. I'm still in the flesh, and I have fleshly tendencies to do things of the flesh. There is something that wells up in me that makes me want to go sit on her grave site because she's in a tomb and talk to her. And I know better. I know that the day hears nothing and knows nothing. So I pass by and I might say, Father, thank you for the time. You're long. Our mother, my mother, me. And thank you for the time that you loan us to her. Notice what I said. I didn't say, Mother, I miss you. Mother, I love you. Mother, I love you. She can't hear me, but I can talk to God about her and give him things for her. And that's what I do. Well, if your mother is still alive, don't wait until she's gone try to pull her out of the coffin, to try to jump in the grave site where she is. Now is the time to show your appreciation and your consideration and your gratefulness for how much you love her and what she has done. Moses' mother, Jacobi, was an example of a good mother. Now, if you want to see your mother again, especially if she's a Christian. That's one thing that you must do. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to say, Pastor, how do I do that? It's simple. We have been giving you recently the ABC of salvation. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Come be, uh, believe that God has forgiven you for your sin. Confess that you're in need of him. Now what did he say? I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I believe that God is uh, able to save me. I believe that he gave his only begotten son. I confess I'm in need of salvation. The Bible says, if thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You find it in Romans 10, 9, and 10. That's so simple as we continue to emphasize. It's not difficult to be saved, but you must follow that plan of salvation. Now, if you do that, and you sincerely believe and repent of your sin, the next step is to pray. Father, I have received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I invite him to come into my life. From this moment forward, through your Holy Spirit, teach me how to live for him. Now, if you pray that prayer, you're saved. That's it, saved. All you have to do is find a Bible preaching, teaching, a holy Bible, church, and make yourself a part of that fellowship. That's it. That's it. Well, we've done the best we can to refresh our memories and to encourage us to appreciate the mom that God has given. And maybe some who have not forgiven their mother, who still in anger with something their mother has did or have not done for them. Shame on you. All that sin comes short of the glory of God. Mothers don't know different. If you want God to forgive you, you need to forgive her. The last thing, those of you who want to contribute financially to the church, 
several ways we can do it. We have the Tithe app on the church website. You can follow those instructions. Or you can make a money order. Or you can write a check. If you're making a money order, please place on the bottom of the money order where you wish your contribution to be applied. If you're sending a check, do the same thing. Indicate where you want your contribution to be applied. Whether it's tithes, whether it's offerings, whether it's building and steering, you indicate it. And we'll make sure that it's placed in the right place. Well, until we meet again, Wednesday night, we'll be back on the air again, 7 o'clock. We're still looking forward to a similar again, but let's not rush it. That's where you're on God. And we believe in that sooner than later. God is going to live this coronavirus and this COVID-19 pandemic from us. And then again, we'll be able to look on each other's face. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to that day. I'm not rushing God. I'm going to do what he has told us to do. God bless you. God keep you. Until we meet again. And all God people say, Father, we thank you for the message. We thank you for the ability to get the message out to the people. And Lord, we've done our best. Now we ask you to give this message legs, oh God, that it can walk into the heart and the conscience of men and women, boys and girls. And let it accomplish your objective. Let it glorify you. Let it terrify Satan. And let it edify the body of Christ. We ask you these blessings and we thank you for all. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you.